Hi friends and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, hello. My name's George Agambar and I'm a UK music producer. Today's video is all about how we can avoid experiencing a system overload when we're working on a project. System overloads happen when your computer doesn't have enough processing power to either play back or record a track and they can really disrupt our workflow. So if you want to learn how to avoid these, make sure you stay tuned and hit the subscribe button and notification bell for new videos every Wednesday. And things will never be the same when I hear your name since you kissed me in the rain. Now I'm sure that many of you will have experienced a system overload before. And if you haven't, then well done, you're doing a really great job. When it happens, playback in your project will suddenly stop and a warning message like this will pop up and this is when we know that we need to make some changes. In this video, we're going to be having a look at the six ways that we can minimize the chances of this happening. We're going to be having a look at optimizing your computer settings, setting the buffer and sample size of your project, using send effects, freezing tracks, bouncing tracks, and removing track inputs. The first thing we need to do is to clear the computer and free up some storage space. By doing this, we'll increase the computer's RAM and therefore it will run more smoothly. I would highly advise backing up your files either on a hard drive or on an online system such as iCloud or Google Drive. And then we need to make sure that we've closed any running apps. We're all guilty of having lots of apps open in the background that we're not actually using, whether this be an internet browser or maybe even just a Word document. But these open apps still take up some of our computer's resources and processing power and therefore can contribute to a system overload. The next thing to do is to check and alter your project's buffer and sample size. And this is because the majority of the time, these are the main contributors to a system overload. To change the buffer size, you go to Preferences and then Audio. Too high of a buffer size and you'll get a latency when recording, and too low and you can get a system overload, so it really is a balancing act. The optimum buffer size changes depending on the computer you have, but normally a size of 64 or 128 is okay. The sample rate is really important. It determines how many samples per second your DAW picks up. We want to make sure that we've set this correctly at the very beginning of our project, as if we change it halfway through, it can really mess with our audio. You can set the sample rate by going to File and then Project Settings. We then have a choice of sample rates. The higher the sample rate, the higher the quality of the recording, but the higher the chance of experiencing a system overload. Normally, a sample rate of 44.1k is absolutely fine, but most engineers tend to choose 48k for their projects if they can get away with it. Another thing we can do to avoid system overload is to use send effects, especially when we're using CPU heavy plugins. And this is because it takes a lot less resources to send lots of tracks to one plugin rather than use multiple copies of the same plugin on lots of different tracks. To set up a send effect, you go over to the channel strip and select a bus. In this bus, you then apply the plugin or plugins you want as you would when applying them to a normal track. You then decide how much of the effect you want to hear in the mix by using the little dial next to the bus name. There is a bit more to learn about using this technique which will change the way you use send effects in your mix. And I've made a video all about this which I'll leave a link to in the description that you can go and check out. There is a great feature in Logic designed to free up some processing power called freezing tracks. Freezing tracks will reduce the resources needed to play back a track no matter how many plugins you have on it. When you freeze a track, the track is bounced into an audio file including all the effects and automation data you've applied. You've just got to bear in mind though that once you've frozen a track, you can't edit it. To edit it and make any changes, you'll need to unfreeze the track make the changes you want and then refreeze it. The simplest way to freeze a track is to use the freeze button in the track header. If you have a project that looks a bit like mine and there's no freeze button in the track header, you simply right click on the header, go down to track header components and then select freeze and you will see the button with the snowflake appear. Then all you need to do is press the button and your track is then frozen. 
The next thing that we can do is to make sure that all our tracks are audio tracks and not software instruments. But this is for when we've already written all the instrument parts and we're happy with it and we're on to the mixing process. This helps free up a lot of processing power because the computer doesn't have to run the software that creates the instrument sound, it just has to worry about playing an audio track. To bounce the software instrument, you select the region you want to bounce, right click in it, go to bounce and join, and then bounce in place. You then have the option to rename the new track and what you want to happen to the original software instrument track. You can then choose if you want to leave the effects applied, the audio tail and the automation details. Just make sure that normalize is turned off. Then you simply click OK and you will see a new audio track of your software instrument created. Another thing we can do to avoid system overloads is to make sure that when we're no longer recording, our tracks don't have an input set. When our tracks do have an input set, Logic is expecting us to record, and therefore uses some processing power. Granted, this will only make a very, very small difference, but it all adds up. To make sure that the track doesn't have an input selected, you go to the channel strip on the left, go to input just under the EQ box, and select no input. And that's all there is to it, that's all you have to do. So there are six ways that we can try and avoid getting a system overload and free up some of our computer's processing power. What I really like is that you don't have to use all of these techniques. You can use a combination of them, or maybe even using just one will work for your project. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you found it useful and interesting. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and if there are any other videos you'd like to see in the future. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell and I will see you again soon.